some parts arrived for the 66 Vibralux. So we're going to start by removing all the knobs. And I'll give him these boss knobs and these two original knobs, but they're going to have all matching. And I'm going to remove this faceplate because it had some some bit. I pushed it back and it, the worst of it's gone. There's, there's just a little bit of a bend to this lip here. So I'm going to take this faceplate off and uh, clamp that flat and reapply everything. So that'll be one level of service today. Uh, the other thing I'm about to do is replace these quarter inch jacks and put in the original RCAs per the owner's request. I think it's a good thing to do. Um, pretty simple. I might even get all the pet hair out of here. I'm going to redo the power wiring to modern safety code, including replacing this faulty switch that has no mechanical resistance whatsoever. The switch is, you hear that click when it goes down, but when it goes up, there's just nothing. So let's do that before it fully fails. All the knobs came off easily except this one. It's been a day or two of, of knobs. The screw is just free spinning. I wonder if they glued this on too. There's some funk in the slot. All right, let's see if this knob puller can get any traction. See, it doesn't want to fit beneath the knob. The back of this has got uh, a felt material on it, so it doesn't score things. I mean, it made a dirty spot, but it's not going to scratch the plastic or the front panel. All right, that knob did come off, so it's just uh, chewed up. And that knob will go in a bag with all the other original knobs, both of them. Now it's time to get all the stuff off the front panel. All right, before I just start doing this, I want to make sure that none of these screws have got gunk in the Phillips slots. They almost always do. And that's a good way to chew up a screw head. If the screwdriver doesn't make good contact. So here's a number one, and it fits these precisely. Faster with the power tool, but uh, I prefer to have a tactile sense of what's happening just in case there's anything wrong all right all the nuts are off the front panel except for the two on the speed and intensity pots because i don't want that panel flapping around while i fight the uh, lamp holder so i've got all these nuts and some wd-40 along with the set screws and uh, board nuts from that 69 Laney. So I'm just going to let this stuff kind of soak for a bit. And I'm waiting for the WD-40 to loosen up that front lamp holder. So I think I'll go ahead and get started on the rear quarter inch jacks. We're going to change back to RCAs while that WD-40 does its thing on the lamp assembly. Well, hopefully this will let everyone see what I'm doing without being in my way. So the easy one is just going to be the vibrato. A little bit trickier here is the uh, reverb switch connection because the way they did it. I may need to replace that 220K. In fact, I think that would be by far the easier way to do it because this is not the original lead and this has all been boogered up. So 
Let's see if I can do this without damaging the wire here. You know, I'm up insulation. Okay, that one solder needs some help to turn the flow again. Do like Caesar. Was it Caesar or Alexander with Gordian knot? I'm ashamed to have forgotten. Let's see. Things I have known in the past. You know, my channel is not like most guitar channels. We talk about things like that from time to time. And uh the constant issue that comes up with these restorations, which leads to the possibility of saying Theseus's ship. So let's just settle with the ship of Theseus. Theseus's, Theseus's. Me talk pretty one day. Mm, that is fiendish. All right, first thing I want to do at this point is clean this, these bits of the chassis here. Let's put a little bit of deoxid on paper towel for that. This stuff is expensive per ounce, so yeah. And I'm gonna give all this rear panel a little bit of a cleaning as well. For the rear panels on fenders, I find that WD-40 does a really nice job of cleaning things up without affecting anything you don't want affected. And then I'll get a little bit of deoxid on the RCA connections that go to the reverb tank while I'm at it. Some of this is not necessary, but while I'm in the area, it only takes a minute and makes the entire ownership experience that much nicer when everything is just that much shinier and pretty and cared for. I'm not trying to fake it to be new. Just nicer. All right. Those are pretty critical though, so I'm going to get those nice and clean. All right, now I've got the new RCA jacks and somewhere in this vicinity, I've got a bag. Somewhere in this vicinity, I've got a bag of three eighths inch tooth washers. Here they are. So I'm gonna need at least two of these, probably four to get the depth. Let's see how it does with Two washers. I see that little bit of dust come out when I did that. Wow. Let's see, two washers is still pretty proud. Three washers gets it where the others are.
make sure the old ones are tight too. They were not. That one was, that's good. Let me check the speaker jacks while I'm here. The front panel nuts on all the pots were quite loose, so I suspected I would need to check that. All right, a very common issue with these things. The leads on the old resistors they used are much longer than the leads on newer resistors. So that won't really span that by itself. So let me get a little bit of bus wire, which is our friend. This will actually be better built than the original, but it takes longer because I don't have the extra length of that old resistor lead. Now, there's that, and I could do this like this, which is how the old ones are done, but that gives me very little room to get the wire in here. I guess I could put the wire in here. It makes more sense to me to do it right here. So, rugged, reliable, sounds great. These are the things I'm chasing for this. Now I'll make sure that solder doesn't flow back too far into the jack because it can interrupt, uh, impede the new plug from going in. But I think we'll be okay here. here if I can get it to go in and originally it was just tucked in I'm gonna give it a little bit of a angle there and I'll do the same thing for the vibrato wire I'll solder those in place It all looks quite good. A little bit of excess here. All right, let's see how the uh, front panel lamp assembly is doing as far as the WD-40. All right, good. So a little bit of resistance. So it doesn't want to unscrew from the front yet. Whatever impacted the front panel that bent that lip up, probably put some pressure on this. But I'll be cleaning these threads in the WD-40 solution with everything else. Let me get the jewel itself off. Let me get these last two pot nuts off. Ah. And the panel comes off. So I'll be cleaning it 
and all these little dents that it's gotten over the years, I'll try to clamp them out. That one's the worst one, and that's one the one that made me want to pull the panel. So I'm not going to show that because uh, it's really not something to put on a video. It's not really exciting. I've got two sheets of, of flat steel, and I put uh, this between the two sheets of flat steel with a little bit of paper towel protecting the, the finished surface from the steel plate. And I've got some C-clamps, and I clamp those steel plates together, and I can do it in targeted areas and just kind of make everything go much more flat again. This is a very, very thin metal, and it, uh, it usually comes out, if not perfect, a hell of a lot better. So uh, I'm going to clean this first. I let it dry, and then clamp it out, and we'll see where we're at. All right, it's all cleaned up, straightened out, all the little kinks and bends. Certainly improved dramatically. It's not a thousand percent straight, but once it's on the panel, once it's on the chassis, it should look good. And I cleaned the front part of the chassis, and I cleaned the contact points on the RASC uh, control panel. And uh, I'll put everything back now and uh, see how it looks. All right, this is looking much better. No more weird bends and bumps and stuff. Time to put the knobs on. New knobs in place. All of them exactly installed the same. Looks really nice. You can see my top secret method for getting them all equidistant from the uh, plane of the faceplate. Let's go on to the uh, power stuff. To recap, for those who didn't see the first video on this, we've got the hot and the neutral. And the neutral is going to the fuse and then to a primary. And the hot is going to the switch and then a primary. And what we want to do is have the hot go to the fuse, then the switch and the primary, and the neutral just tied to a primary without this death cap. So I'm going to uh, just let this be the before and I'll show the after because what I'm doing is pr fairly simple, just moving some wires around. Uh, I'm going to make sure that the ground wire is longer than the hot and negative. So if uh, the cable were to be pulled out, the ground would break last, so if the hot broke free and touched the chassis, rather than make the chassis live, it would just trip the circuit breaker in the house or wherever you're playing, so you don't get electrocuted, because if there was live voltage on the chassis, and you, you're plugged in, and you're touching your guitar strings, there's live voltage on you. So, let me get started, and I'll show the after. Finishing up the uh, changes to the power stuff, and I thought I'd take the time to show a pet peeve of mine. I have to replace this power switch, and I see a lot of guys install power switches in amps in general, particularly fenders, like this. They'll just put the nut on there and be done. No, this is the original position with the standby, and the original power matched that exactly. So we're going to do that ourselves. And for those of you who don't know how the world works, you adjust this nut on the back to set the depth, and then the nut on front tightens things up. I'm going to reuse the original front nut, uh, but keep the new nut on the back. Viola. Okay, now the uh, ground, the green here, is about an inch and, a half, inch and a half longer than the white and black. The black is the hot, the white is the neutral. They're twisted and shaped away from the rectifier stuff. So the positive, the, the hot, the black, goes straight 
to the inside connection on the fuse. The fuse goes to the new power switch and to one of the primaries. The white, the neutral, goes here where the other primary is, and these connections on the switch are disconnected, and the death cap, the polarity cap, is gone. Uh, so the next and last things to do on the chassis are to install those voltage balance resistors here on the series caps, and to do something about this messed up mounting hardware on the output transformer. So I think I'm gonna do this real fast, and take out the crappy hardware that's there now, bend these flanges flush, you know, get them all nice, and reinforce that with some uh, st uh, stainless steel washers, and get some real good hardware connections on there so this will no longer have the w wiggles and wobbles. All right, what's happened here is the old screw, which is just a sheet metal screw going into the chassis, stripped as they do, and someone drilled out the hole to get so that they could put a machine screw through here as is you know proper but they drilled that hole out a bit oversized and uh the flange just went down into that metal and if you see this on this flat surface you see how bent that flange is so i'm going to try on both sides to get this thing on a on a level and uh at that point i'll reinforce everything with some small uh, fender washers and get this built up strong. Let's see how I do. Okay, I was able to get these flanges more or less straight and the little divot where the hole in the, in the flange was puckered down has been st uh, straightened and, and clamped it out. It's almost all in the same plane. So beneath here, there's a stainless steel washer between the chassis and the flange. And the, the diam inner diameter of that washer is smaller than the inner diameter of the hole in the chassis and the uh, hole in the flange, which means that the metal in the flange doesn't just get sucked down and pushed down into the hole in the chassis. And then another stainless steel washer up top, and those two washers together keep this from deforming anymore and spread the load out. Um, there's a greater surface area. And then there's a split washer here, a compression washer, so this thing will not want to ever vibrate loose and uh, stainless steel on all this. On the other side, there are some new Keps nuts and it's all cranked down very solid and no more wobble on the transformer. That wobble is actually the table that everything's sitting on. And I've got new 220K one watt metal oxides uh, serving as the voltage balance resistors. And it is time to move on to the minor cabinet repair and the reverb tank stuff, but I'm gonna have some lunch first. All right, the worst of the dirt and dust bunnies is out. The reverb tank is secured back to the backer board. It is uh, correctly oriented with the springs down and the jacks on the speaker side of things. It's got new reverb cables connected, uh, screws at each end securing the bag to the cabinet and the Reverb wires are going very neatly through these two holders. Just enough slack to be able to reconnect to the chassis when it's back in place. All the uh, cabinet screws through the cleats were checked. They are all tight. All the speaker nuts are tight, not cranked down as tight as they can be because that's how you get problems, but you don't want to deform the frame or damage the wood, but they are not going to vibrate loose and none of the screws are backed out into the grill cloth on the other side. So I'm waiting for this glued and clamped cleat to set up about another 30 minutes. And then I'll make sure that all this is sounding good and I'll put the rear bottom panel back.